It's uh, two minutes past two. Um, my name is Varun Malik. I'm the CEO of a new age consulting firm called Consolidon. Uh, Consolidon is new age in the sense that we didn't take the traditional consulting firm model of hiring a lot of consultants and then growing the firm. Instead, we partnered with a lot of subject matter experts from boutique consulting firms. Uh, so we've partnered with more than 300 boutique consulting firms and they become the consultants who deliver the projects that we win. Um, Connected Insights is a web summit that we've hosted with about 70 of our boutique consulting firms. Uh, this is day six of this seven day web summit. Uh, we're doing about 50 panel discussions and uh, webinars and uh, six workshops during the course of this event. And uh, we're uh, really looking forward to discussing thoughts, discussing ideas uh, during this session. Uh, so what I'd ask all of you to do, if that's okay, is to feel free to interact during this discussion. You can either use the raise hands feature on, uh, on Zoom, or if your video is on, you can actually wave and we will uh, ask you to uh, sort of contribute. I see some of the other part participants trickling in. Uh, so I think uh, Mads, I'll hand over to you to get started. Welcome Rishi, welcome Elsa and Mercy. So over to you, Matt. Thank you so much, Arun. And to all of you, a very warm welcome to this huge topic about the brain and the customer and how to sell. So uh, I'm maybe going to disappoint you in the beginning. And that's not, maybe that wasn't a good idea to start, but I'm going to disappoint you a little because we cannot cover all aspects. On the other hand, I'll give you a little hunger and motivation saying what we're going to work with today is probably the most important topic whether you are a salesman, a leader, or just a human being, because we're going to speak about the brain, the brain's re relation to ourselves, but also to those people we meet and communicate with, and definitely how we can use uh, certain tools to be more efficient in the communication. So welcome uh, once again, and we're going to go into this topic, and I will start a little about my own story, because I've been developing salespeople and sales organizations for um, more than 25 years, actually. And uh, one thing always was very difficult for me to understand was that when I did the training, people didn't change behavior. Uh, training was amazing. They were really uh, amazed and they were so motivated, but nothing happened. And then to understand more about that, I uh, dig deeper into, to, first of all, uh, what was called uh, hypnotherapy. And hypnotherapy is interesting because Actually, you, that can help you to get rid of some of your habits for if you're eating too much chocolate or smoking cigarettes or whatever. There are very often a connection that you with hypnotherapy can change the habit and then you get a new habit because when you want to get rid of something, you often have to get something instead. That's the same in selling because very often when you're going for selling, uh, first of all, the salesman, when you have to learn something new, you have to get rid of some old behavior. Secondly, if you want to sell something, normally people need to change a position, get rid of something to have something else. And every time we do that, we challenge the brain. So that's what I'm going to speak about today. And I'll actually start a little with, with an example saying, let's imagine that two amazing tennis players have to play a game of tennis. They are in the same field of playing. They are in the same pitch, the same laws, the same rules, the same actually more or less the same equipment. And they are also at the same tennis stadium, normally with spectators. And the funny question is, who will actually win? Which player will actually win the game? And normally somebody else always tells me, those who make the most points. Yes, you're right. But who has the best foundation to make the most points? That is the person who wants it the most, who's most ready, most dedicated, most motivated, most prepared. And this is actually what we call intensity. And intensity is also the name of our company. So what we want to deliver is actually to create intensity in the way we sell. And intensity is not necessarily speed. It could also be very present. It could also be very caring. It could also be very understanding, but intensity kills skills. Intensity kills structure, because if you show no intensity, you'll probably lose the game. And then you need to be prepared 
to meet something you didn't know. And that also is an intensity to expect the unexpected when you do something in selling. And then a funny thing, try to imagine that one of these guys, amazing guys, were meeting somebody who's on the ranking was maybe number 645. Could they lose the game? No way. Yes, they could if they're not ready to play and they didn't show intensity. And this is exactly the same when we look upon sales. Some of you out there, you're probably used to being the market leader, the most important brand. And uh, then suddenly one day, one of your clients leave you and they join a small competitor. You didn't even see them as a competitor. What happened? Did they develop a product better than yours? No way. Did they develop something amazing or lower price? Maybe a lower price, but what they actually did was they showed more intensity in the conversation with the client and you forgot to show intensity because everything we're gonna speak about today is about relationship and all salespeople talk about relationship and relationship is not created physically, it's created emotionally in the brain. That's what we're gonna speak about. How do we actually use that and how do we create it and maintain it as well? So welcome so much. I gotta warn you a little because you could say that the topic we're gonna go into today, you're gonna learn to understand a little about the brain and the structure and actually how it controls, controls both yours and the customer's behavior. But we have to say, it's a little like looking on a, a map of let's say Europe, uh, looking from, from, from a very, uh, broad perspective, you see the countries, you may even see some cities, but when you zoom in, there might be small roads that you don't see, small, narrow, one-way streets, you don't see them. So today we will see this from a little out, out of space or from, from the air. We don't go very, very detailed into small things. We take the big picture and zoom into what actually uh, controls the brain and the behavior. And then you'll get some uh, tools and structure how to influence uh, the brain, both uh, the brain of yourself, because uh, that is your most, most important tool, but also the brain of, the, of the, the customer. Because if you can influence the brain, then you can influence behavior and then you can influence uh, decision. So what we're going to work with here is brain, behavior and tools. And now I'll stop sharing because I'll go to my flip chart and then I'll draw a little for you. I hope you all see my flip chart and maybe can you do me, put me in a spotlight. So it's easier for people. Thank you so much to see this. We're gonna speak about some of the most important structures of the brain. Uh, first of all, we need to know that there is a hierarchy in the brain. We, come up, we go back to that in a minute. Then we need to understand there is a very, very strong connection between thoughts, emotions, and action, not tea here like a teacup, but thoughts, emotions, and actions, they are so strongly connected. I'm gonna show you a little later. And then we need to understand that the brain can be trained like a muscle. It ain't by any chance a muscle, but it, it can be trained like a muscle. And what happened is when you really train a muscle in the gym, you see, I haven't done it. If you really train a muscle, what happened is that those small fibers, they will break and build up again to be stronger. This is the same when you train your brain, you build something new, you build it stronger and stronger. And if you want to change, then you have to break down and build again. That is the same when you approach the client or the customer, he or she has exactly the same structure, a hierarchy combination between thoughts, emotion and action and their brain is being trained. I said it could be trained. It is being trained every day because every time we do something, we train the brain to be stronger and stronger. Unfortunately, sometimes it's actually what we do is we strengthen a bad habit. So, but we'll come back to that in a minute. First of all, we need to know that the brain, it is the organ we have in our head. And the reason for having a brain, I'll come back to that in a minute. But first of all, the brain is around 1.5 to 1.8 kilo. It's only fat and water, proteins, uh, nothing amazing, but it actually is able of creating a little electricity that can light up a small light bulb. That means it can actually give a little e electricity. So the power in the brain is amazing. It, it actually is 
only around 2% of our body weight, but it consumes, and when it's balanced, it consumes 20% of our energy. And that's when it's balanced. That means when you're suddenly out of balance, not physically, that could also happen, but more mentally, you feel that you don't know what to do. You're frustrated. Uh, you don't know what is the right thing to do. You're uh, split between two decisions. Then it consumes much more than 20%. And I think you all know that because when you're hit by something very difficult, you, your head get uh, hot. And that's because it consumes more energy. So that's why there's only one reason for having a brain. And I'm sorry to say it's not for thinking, it is for surviving. The reason we have a brain is for surviving. And that's a problem because uh, surviving years ago uh, was of course because we had to survive from animals or enemies. Today, surviving is more emotionally, uh, surviving from stress, pressure, everything happening, but it's still surviving. And the brain, the brain is attacked by all these things. So two things is important to understand. When you approach a client, he or she has exactly the same structure, like you and me. There might be different personality, but the structure of the brain is the same. The function of the brain is the same. They might be slightly different in personality, but the structure is the same. And when you know that, we can use it. So the layout of the brain is the same. And they are also trying to survive. That could be surviving the position in the company, surviving, uh, given, getting success. They all try to do that. And we need to understand. And you and I do the same. So when you approach a client and you go for a meeting, you want to be successful when you get home. And if you are sent out with nothing, you want to protect yourself when you get home. And then you tell it's, it was a bad meeting. It was a bad lead. It was a bad client. But maybe you didn't do right. That's because you're protecting yourself. You want to survive. And then you want to consume as little energy as possible. That means survive and energy consumption low. To do that, the brain loves habits because you don't need to think very much when you use habits, routines, autopilot. That's very good and it's a really amazing structure, but that's also the problem that we challenge for our sales, for our sales person as, as me, but also for the customer when we have to, to influence them. Why is this happening? This is because when we look at the brain, the brain is divided into three sections. Of course, it's divided into much more zones and areas and neurons and everything we have, but we don't go into that. Those of you that really find this interesting, I'm going to do a masterclass later on where we go deeper into things like this and we train much more how we influence ourselves and others. We cannot do that today, unfortunately. But the brain is divided into three areas. We have here in the front what is called neocortex. Neocortex is the biggest part of the brain uh, and also the part of the brain that differentiates us from most uh, animals because they don't have a neocortex. Neocortex is also what we could call the thinking brain. It is also by uh, 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 Dr. Kahneman, it's also called what we call system two. That means what is happening here is that this system that is all only, only three to four million old, three to four million years old, that system is very slow thinking. That is the one reacting to solutions, comparing A with B, trying to figure out what can happen here. It's controllable, it's conscious. This is the conscious part of the brain. That's where we are conscious thinking. This is also the part of the brain that we want to activate more when we want to be present. But the problem is that we are not in this system for a very long period. We cannot concentrate for a very long period. We are more likely to be in what is called our system number one. And our system one, number one is what is called the primal brain divided into two areas. The first one is called the limbic system. The limbic system, system one, is 500 million old. 500 million years old. That means it's several, several hundred years, million years older than system number two. 
This one was developed in the beginning. And what is this system? This is uh, actually a system that normally only can think about the past and maybe the future, but not the present. It learned from the past. It's a, it's a very, uh, it's, it's always on, meaning that it's always turned on. It's created by emotions. And this system is related directly to a central nervous system, meaning that it gets all impulses from our senses. So this system is always turned on. It can impact by our eyes, ears, mouth, and like that, the nose as well, because the nose is the only one having no filter. The nose goes directly into the primal brain, to the limbic system. Uh, and what we see is most animals, they have a, a sense that is stronger than the other one. For us, we have, generally speaking, our senses are more or less equal to, to, to strength. Visual is the definitely strongest side we have, the, the strongest sense we have, 60% of our uh, impressions come from visuals, not from hearing, not from smelling, not from tasting, it's the visuals. I don't know if any of you tried to eat in, in a restaurant where you eat in, in the dark. I was uh, trying that in Berlin, that we have uh, served the dinner by uh, blind people, they served, they walk around in totally dark uh, room but they can serve you, they can find you, they can hear you because the other senses, they, they turned them up. But for me, it was totally crazy because I couldn't see what I was eating. And, and I got a steak, they said, uh, but it tasted totally strange because normally I can see together with red tomatoes or, or green or broccoli or whatever. This time, everything was closed down, black. And I really had to try to learn other senses. And doing this two hours, it was crazy two hours, my, my hearing got better. I could hear more detail because I had to shorten this sense. So this is actually the second system or the first system, system number one, that is a very fast reacting where we have the slow system. This is a very fast reacting and it's happening here. We're working with what is called the subconsciousness. Subconsciousness means that here it's our subconsciousness taking over. And most of the day we are using this system. Actually, research scientific studies shows that we are only around 10% of our awake time in the system number two. 90% of the time we are in system number one, just doing routines, doing what we used to do because here we have habits. That means when we want to speak to a client, we come back to that later, we really want to speak to system number two. We want to get them to think, we want them to be conscious, we want them to react, we want them to calculate, but automatically they are forced into system number one to stick to their fast reaction, what they know already, all habits and routines, so we need to get them out of this. But unfortunately, they don't have unlimited resource resources. So if we are too often bringing them in that system, we are killing their energy. We are killing their concentration. So we need to use something that they know they feel safe because the minute this system don't feel safe, and remember here, survive and energy. The minute they don't feel safe, they cut down. That's also why in my career starting as a, as a uh, consultant, I often show people, if I train your salespeople, you're going to have a higher profit, better turnover, more new clients. And I showed them exactly what they could get. I really got them to think about what they should do. But they went directly back to this system and said, what will happen if it doesn't come? What will happen if I spend 100,000 DM on, on mats and we get no results? What will my boss say to me, the chairman of the board? What will the sales people say to me if I present them for another sales training? And everything here said, don't go there. You will lose your position. You will be killed, so to speak. It's easier to say, it's great that you show me an opportunity, Matt, but I know what I got and I don't know what I could get. So I stick to this situation. And I think we all know how this sometimes get us to be very reactive, uh, staying to what we already know. And then we have, as part of the primal system, we have also what is called the auto brain or reptilian brain, as somebody heard about. This is 
This is a very small part of the brain physically, but so to say, like in life, small people sometimes get to be the bus. This one is the bus. The hierarchy is very simple. On the third place, we have the neocortex. On the second place, we have system number one, the limbic system. And here we have the bus. The bus is only activated when the pressure or the heat get tough. Some of you might be, uh, might be afraid of uh, have agnophobia, being afraid of, of, of these small creatures. And agnophobia is crazy because that small creature you can kill by stepping on it without any problem. And very, very few people around the world, especially from Denmark where I come, very few to nothing will be killed uh, by these spiders. But what happened is the brain cannot control it. And the logic thinking that is here, logical thinking said nothing because this brain gets so afraid saying, wow, emotional hit. I'm emotional here, here by my emotions saying, oh, this creature, I really hate it. And the last time I saw it, it was coming down from the ceiling to me. And what it does, it does now, it activates the reptilian brain that then has three options, fight, flight, or freeze. Fight means kill the bastard. Flight means leave the room immediately. Freeze means just be paralyzed, standing still, saying nothing. This is the reaction we get when we are under too much pressure. This is actually also the re reaction we can get when we could get too stressed. And again, coming back to selling, the minute you put too much pressure on a person in selling, they are activated here. I know it seems a little dramatically, but sometimes you feel, why don't he answer my email? Why don't he call me back? Why don't he just drop a message? Maybe it's because there's an overload, or maybe it's because you didn't make it easy. That is one of the key words. How can we make it easy to understand? Or maybe it's because you activated senders here where, he, where he's trying to say, how can I get rid of that person without speaking with him? And then he, then he decides to freeze or flight, or then the minute you call him and you get him up the corner, he starts fighting. Your price is too high. I heard bad about you. We don't expect it anything. Then he goes in attack. So we need to understand this controls the sender. And the hierarchy is on the first place, the auto brain, second, the limbic system, third, the, the neo, neocortex. And system number one and system number two, we're going to speak about later. Combination between thinking, emotions, and action. Here it's very interesting to understand. Try just to remember the time before we had COVID-19. Think about how you went to the beach, how you went to a, 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 to a party for dancing, for concert in Dubai overall, or somewhere in Paris, or in a Coldplay concert in Hamburg. That was my last concert. All these, all these amazing events, you remember who you were participating. And most of you, because I gave you these words, I started thinking, and some of you actually create now emotions, saying, yeah, it was an amazing time. And now you probably put them into action, saying, I need to do something. You got inspired because this combination here actually activates thought, emotion, and action. And if I've been talking about something differently, something bad, about a bad situation, I would have started reacting a different way, bad thoughts, bad emotion, or no action. So here we need to understand these are very simple uh, and this gets stronger, stronger, stronger every day. And we learn it from being small because when we're small children, we don't use neocortex. That one starts activated really for, for, for girls a little earlier than, than boys. For girls, it's in the middle of the, the, the teenage years, they start using their neocortex, being more rational, being more controlling something. I know they don't control all emotions, but they are more controlled here. For boys, we are in the middle of the 20s before we really start controlling anything and being more rational. Some of us could be lucky a little earlier, but that happened here. That's it. That is interesting because after that, being grown up, we learn so many things from our parents so many things from our uh, friends, so many things from our surroundings, our culture. And these things really go into being a very huge uh, burden, but also heritage of our behavior. And when we meet somebody doing something differently, 
it's really strange. For me, uh, one of the things that can be strange is when we celebrate Christmas in Denmark, people can eat uh, duck, they can eat goose or turkey. I always grown up with having duck. But the first time together with my first girlfriend, I had to visit them, they served a goose. I, I, I didn't understand how they could do it. It was totally ruined my Christmas. And it was only a small thing, but it was enough to do something with my routines. Just a short one about the auto as well. When you've been sitting here watching me, all your auto system is going on, meaning that everything in your body is going automatically on in what is called uh, the unconsciousness. You're breathing. Oh, you started thinking about the breathing when I said, did you <laughs> respire or what happened actually? And also in your liver, your kidney, your lungs, your, your heart, every of these organs has been delivering what they should, but you didn't think about it because it happened automatically and it happened in the unconscious part. Then the minute I would have had my hand up and hold, hold your breath, then you start thinking about it and it goes from auto into something about flight, free, uh, freeze or fight. So this is the brain and the structure. I'll give you a couple of examples in a presentation now, because we can use this. Uh, we can use this here, and I'll just share my screen with you. Uh, again, I hope you see it now, uh, because I'm still at the flip chart. When we speak to somebody and we ask them a question, then normally what happens is we react very fast from the system number one, that is up till 60,000 times faster than system number two. That means if I want to speak to system number two, I need to address it the right way. In my planning, what, what system I activate. And I'll give you a couple of examples. They are not related to sales. But if I show you this picture now, uh, this guy, then I know all of you immediately start thinking good or bad. And, and I think there's nothing in between right now. This is good or bad. But the funny thing is, if I ask you, what do you think about him? Somebody would say, I don't really like him. Somebody would say, yeah, he did an amazing uh, difference. But if I ask you a more deeply question and then ask you, do you actually know how many reforms he created and what they created in society? There's a difference because if I ask you, do you like him? then you react from the limbic system. But if I ask you the other question, do you actually know how many reforms he did and what they actually meant for society? Then I'm activating system number two, slow thinking system number two, fast thinking system number one. We take another one because if you go to this, everybody see the Eiffel Tower and say, yeah, Paris. I could ask a simple question, what do you think about Paris? Oh, I love it, somebody would say. Even somebody would say it without being there. Somebody would even say it without knowing it, but it comes directly from the limbic system and depending on situation, we are positive or negative. Maybe we've been the ones so it was a terrible uh, a holiday and then we say, oh, I hate everything about Paris because we got a strong impression in the emotions and that comes to action that we say, I don't like it. But if I ask you a deeper question for system number two, I ask you a question, please, could you specify the five best restaurants you visited in, in Paris? Because I'm going there, I need your advice. Then I would activate your system number two. Or if I wanted you to ask, do, how much do you know about the story of the Eiffel Tower and the, the world, actually the Expo, it was a part of Expo, can you tell me a little about that? Then I need to activate your thinking brain and not just your emotional brain. And this is exactly what we need to understand when we're in meetings. Uh, I, I, last week I coached a, a sales guy. He has really big troubles uh, uh, closing his deals. And very often what he does in the end of the meeting, he asks, so I presented my product, uh, how, do you like it? And most clients said, yeah, yeah, we like it. And then he said, great, and nothing happened. Try to imagine that he changed his question and saying, okay, now we've been through this. What are the biggest benefits you see from my product? Or how do you see next step could be? You see, this is a totally different question. This is action oriented. This is solution oriented. This is next step oriented. But what happened for him is 
He just actually gets her friendly. Yes, but nothing. So we have to work with his closing technique, not like an ABC because I really hate that always be closing. I like more always be caring because see that's much more important. So we give it, take another one. Now, uh, please participate in this one because uh, I'm gonna give you a small uh, uh, task to do. When, if I gave you this task here, it would be very, very easy for most of you to answer because what you do is you just consult your system number one. But if I give you the second one, this algorithm, this is very difficult. You can do it, but maybe you need a calculator or an Excel sheet or what you need to think because now I activated your system number two. And that is the difference. And please, what I like you to do is, can you just all of you unmute yourself and please put on your camera. Please unmute yourself and put on your camera. Yes, please. All of you unmute and put on your camera because now we're gonna do an exercise together. This exercise, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show you some words. These words are different colors. And what I like you to do is loud and clear, say out the, the color of the word, not the word itself. So just say out the color of the word, please. Red, we can do it to red, red, white, white, yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, blue, yellow, green, yellow, green, 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 red, brown, white, blue, white, white, blue. Blue. white blue. Amazing. This was a very easy one and it called directly for system number one. No problem. Now I changed a little. Now it is not as structured, but I still want you to say out loud the color of the word, not the meaning of the word. Please do it this time here. White, white, green, green, red, red, white, blue, red, red, green, white, white, blue, blue, red, red. So what you see is now it got a little more difficult, right? Because now yeah. you had to think, is this actually white? Is it green? Is it blue? Because words and colors are not linked together because they were saying red, but it was white. And my, my eyes are reading red, but it also sees white. And this is actually some of the problems we have because the brain reacts more strongly to what it actually reads than what it actually sees in the color. And we have to get, what was the assignment here? Oh, I had to say out loud the color. So this is also happening sometimes for clients. And those of you that did a mistake, you really hate it, I know, because nobody likes to do mistakes. So this is system number one and system number two. System number two is fast, it's learned by heart, it's habits, it patterns, it's convenient. And system number two is slow thinking, learning, habits, no habits, sorry, no patterns. And that means when we want to learn the client to buy, we need to speak to system number two, but we have to get it related to system number one. If you speak too much to system number one, they don't change habits. And if we speak too much to system number one without relating to system number one, they get tired. And every day, as I said, the brain is being trained because at that time when you drove to work, you've been driving that route so many times you don't even think about it. But then if you change your job, and you need to, to meet in a different office, you start thinking about going to the office. And that's where you use system number one for routines and system number two for, for more slow thinking. So, but what I'll do now, I'll just stop, share the screen and I'll do the last exercise with you. Please uh, spotlight me, can I get? The last exercise, keep on if you want to your, your, your uh, camera, please. But the exercise just to show why we people cannot multitask because a lot of times we all think we can. Women a little more than, than, than men because they are a little different. But please put up your hands and your fingers and then start doing what I call round circles with your pointing finger on the right hand. Round circles, very easy. Everybody using system one, no problem. Then take your left pointing finger and make eight figures. Eight figures, very sharp, very clear, very round, very nice done, perfect. No difficulties. Now please combine. Here we make circles, here we make eight figures. And now try to see if you can do this and then you'll run. This shows how complicated small simple tasks are when they are correlated. 
then try to imagine that you're the purchaser or decision maker of a new CRM system. And in front of you is the consultant of the company that's gonna show you what you're gonna buy. And you get a lot of questions, you get no answers. You get a lot of answers without understanding the question. So now we need to know, how do we actually, I put up here a brain and we all know, we can know the structure. I put up another brain, we know all the structure. We have system one and system number two, and this is the salesman and this is the buyer. What is interesting here is they are, so to speak, they are not the same people. Uh, they are not the same history, but they have, so to speak, the same structure of the brain. There could be some small differences on how strong and how reactful the amygdala is. Amygdala is the one that creates tension and aggressivity, but, but don't, don't care about that. Generally, they are very similar. And actually, wherever we go around the, the globe, around the world, it's the same. But what is interesting is that guy and that guy or this girl, women, whatever, they want to build trust. And trust is, remember, trust is an emotion. So trust is structured in the primal brain in system number one. But what very often happens is when a sales guy comes, he, so to speak, spams the brain with questions. And he asks a lot of questions. Just one funny, one funny thing. Sometimes I see salespeople walk in a room, sit down, and then they say in the beginning of a meeting, okay, the most important thing today is you, not me. So I'm going to ask a lot of questions about your needs. Did you at all build that trust to get the right information? Can you be sure that he's ready to answer all these questions? Or should you build it up in the right way that you tell a little about yourself? You show him some emotions. You make understand that you connect because connections happen from system number one to system number one, not between number two and number two. So we have to connect to him, but we don't connect by starting talking about the weather or COVID-19. COVID-19 has been a terrible disaster. I did a mistake myself because what happened a lot of times is since people go directly into the meeting and then start saying virtually uh, on, on, on the screen saying, okay, Things are probably also bad with you about COVID-19, right? Are you working from home? Is it a tiring time? Are you, are, are you, are, are you getting demotivated? And I know it's not said like that, but what happened is you lower energy. That means why speak about something that don't create the state you want to create, state of emotions? That means you have to think about a totally different question because I did that training with a, a group of industrial sellers in the, one of the biggest uh, pump manufacturers in the world, we trained to ask a different question, said, now COVID-19 has been here, what, can you think you, what do you think you can benefit from that? How did it impact the good side of your business? How do, can you actually help your clients because of this? That means I want, I want to point the direction to something that is good instead of just something that is bad. So here it's very important that I want to go in and I want to build trust. One of the biggest, uh, the best tools to build trust is to understand when I want to share some knowledge, some information with anybody. There is a very important structure to follow. And that is very important for the brain, but it's also very important for the emotions. Simon Sinek says, it all starts with a why. I nearly agree with him, but I also disagree a little. The why is very important because the why talks about benefit, consequences, what I can gain, what I can achieve, and why is very important. But to calm down the brain, to make it ready to talk about why, I need to address what. And what is, what are we going to speak about? What can I expect from you? What do you expect from me today? What is the again, agenda for today? What is happening here? That means I need to address this very clearly. And then we speak about the why. What can you expect to benefit? And then it's very interesting. These two are so important for the brain. But remember, the brain creates pictures in the mind. 
And pictures in the mind will only be reality when perception is that it's reality. Because perception is reality in the brain. We see things that are not even here. We, that's why we have this amazing city in Dubai. That's why we have people on the moon. That's because somebody saw something they didn't know could happen. Here it's very important to understand. Maybe some of you in some countries, it's possible to play some kind of a lottery. You go in and you buy this steak and then you can, not a steak to eat, but a, a sweep steak, you buy these numbers. And then on a Saturday it's drawn and you can win $400 billion or whatever. We know it from the US, we know it from all countries around the world. But the funny thing is people know what a lottery is. They know what they can gain, but they also know what they can lose because buying this might cost $2. And the big problem is, you're telling me I can win $400 billion. I could just have just a short portion of them will be enough. So I understand totally the why. I understand totally the what, but I don't understand the how. The how is, how do I win? And right, what I see right now, perception is reality. I only see how I lose. And this is one of the most important things for, for sales people, we need to make it totally clear for clients. What are we speaking about? Why, what is your benefit? But also before leaving them, how can we move on? Because the brain really loves to see how to do things. And if I cannot see it, it will just stick to, to, to system number one, because that's our habit and routines. So we need to, to focus on how we actually create this what, why, and how in the structure of the argumentation. And then how can we help? How can we help the client to bridge the what to the how and the why to the how? Because of course, when they go back and said, I bought a new CM system, they can easily tell all the whys. But if they don't know the how, they will never get the benefit. This is, this is a bag of dollars time, whatever it is, this is all the benefit. If they don't see the road to this, they will not get it. So we need to start our communication very, very clearly from what is called the what, why, and the how. how. And then I'll just go back to my presentation here to show you a little more from my screen. What, why, how is the most important structure to any message I have to anybody. This can also be used in digital marketing, in emails, in anything. People know to know what to do, why to do, how to do, and maybe even when and with who. Another very important part of this is, I'll go through this, is that uh, there is a structure for this. And the structure is, persuasion is about this. If I want to persuade, and I know persuasion doesn't sound that nice, the structure is I need to make sure that people can see the pain. The pain is not very nice to talk about, but of course I need to challenge them about pains. They also need to be ready to see how I claim to solve this, because if I cannot claim, now we're back to the why and the how, if I cannot tell them the why is the pain, if I cannot show them how I will help them with what and how, then they're not interested in being persuaded. And a lot of times I see salespeople that really go hard on the pain and then leaving purchases in a, in a painful situation. And remember, what is the goal of the brain? The goal of the brain is to survive and spend a little energy as possible. So what it does now when a sales guy leaves them only being painful, they just look at themselves and said, he was a terrible fool. He didn't understand my situation. He didn't react as I expected. Forget him. I don't want to work with him. But if somebody can show you pain and then they can show you the claim they have to how they can help you, then they can actually show you this is interesting. I know there is a pain. Please help me to make this painful situation not happen or leave me. And then after the pain, after the claim, we can go into a very interesting thing about what can you gain from this? But very often we see that a lot of salespeople start by the gain. And I think you all tried them. When somebody calls you, they want you to invest. They talk a lot about what you can gain. If you invest a thousand dollars, you will get $5,000 within a year and you can invest in golds and bitcoins and everything. 
The problem is they jump directly to the game and the brain starts saying, be careful. You never talk to that guy. Somebody will cheat you because he didn't actually, he or she didn't actually enter with pain, claim and gain. He went directly here and the, the brain has what is called an loss aversion. It's afraid of losing. It's always afraid of losing something. So if you jump, jump directly to the gain, you can maybe persuade them. But very often what you will see is they cancel what they wanted to do. What you see is those people trying to, to sign you up for a gain, they very, very often have cancellations because they didn't go through the pain, the claim and the gain structure. So actually after creating the pain, you showed how you can claim, then to make them more happy. That is actually what I call to make, uh, what I call mental ease. Then you have to go into the gain to show them, wow, this is amazing. And then you need all the way to deliver to the brain. I'll come back to that in a minute because delivering to the brain, that means you actually speak to the brain. And then we just have to be aware of one thing more. Uh, in old days, most of you probably heard about good old uh, Abraham Maslow talking about the human needs. Tony Robbins created what is called the six human needs. But there's also a guy, uh, David Rock, uh, who's a scientist as well, who worked with what is called understanding the structure of the brain system. The brain system always think in two ways. It's thinking about threat and then thinking about reward. We get a lot of rewards when we eat, when we train, exercise, fitness, when we are together with other people, we get a lot of rewards because we are stimulated positively in the brain. It actually releases positive hormones like dopamine, serotonin, endorphins, uh, oxytocin. That is the happy stage, what we call in my uh, language, in intense, we call it the green track. And I need to bring people on green track where they think positive, feel positive, and they act positive. But on the other hand, I can bring them on what is called the black track. And the black track means negative thinking, negative emotions, negative action, and negative action here in selling is no action. So we have to understand that the brain has what is called a threat and reward system. This threat and reward can be on what I call the black side, the negative side, or it can be on the green, on the positive side. And what is important to understand is, this is the human brain reacting. So every time we meet a sales guy, there is a threat that my status and my position could be under attack. That means if a sales guy comes into my company and show that the solution I decided to have five years ago was a bad solution and he has something better. One hand, I get something better. On the other one, it was very easy for everybody to see that I made a mistake five years ago. Crazy. I think we all soon have seen that. Sometimes we even stick to mistakes just to show I didn't make a mistake. We stick to them because we're stubborn or we're protecting ourselves. So the first part we need to understand is then when you address a client, he or she can be threatened by status, position, and you need to help them not to be afraid, but to feel that you're together. And you need sometimes you can even help them to gain a better position, but you have to understand the pain is with them and now you can gain. I had a very interesting example. One of my clients, they uh, did a mistake in the invoicing for a very big company. They did a mistake in invoicing for actually a year. And that meant every month they paid too much. And then in the end of the year, they found out and they called the, the client and said, sorry, we did a really big mistake last year. So actually you need to have back 20,000 US dollars. It was a huge deal, 20,000 US dollars. Normally when somebody calls you and tells, here is a box of $20,000, most people will be happy. But that purchaser who was responsible for the contract, he said, he actually said, sorry, my language, shit, I'm in big trouble. And then they ask him, what's the problem? He said, I'm responsible for the contract. I should have seen this mistake long time ago. So now I go and present them the happy thing, 20,000 back, but I'm actually showing that I did a bad job. 
Think about it. We had a happy message. He got actually a black thought message. So status is one of them. People all the time, remember yourself, when you go out and you're trying to buy something, I'm a man. So if I go out with my, my, my wife and we're trying to buy, I want to show that I'm the man. I have made decisions. I know I don't do that, but, but she makes them. But, but I want to show I'm the man. I know everything. I'm strong. I'm here. I don't want to lose my position. And if the salesman is trying to attack me, my brain is activated immediately. And then I said, he, had a, he has a shitty product. I don't like it. He's a bad salesman. Just to protect myself. Remember, that's the brain, how it works with your clients. Then another one. We want certainty. We want to be sure about what can happen. Sure here can be, we want to see the plan for doing this. We want to see the next step. I'm just in the middle of negotiating with somebody about buying a house and I don't understand anything about the next step. It makes me very uncomfortable. It makes me uncertain. It's made me insecure because I want to look good, not look bad. So we want certainty. You have to create that for your clients. Help them to get status or at least remain status, help them to get certainty. And then the funny thing is, I think we all know this as well. We want autonomy. We don't want to be told. We want to be safe and somebody to help us, but we also want to make decisions ourselves. We have to read that from the client. And sometimes even we could, if, if I want to, I have two pens here. I have a black and a white. If I want to sell you the black and you're somebody who's really high on autonomy, I would probably say to you, now we talked about these two. Normally, I would recommend people to, to make decisions. But in this case, I think I want you to go for the white one. Then most people have and thought, OK, that's good, but I want the black. What happened? They want to decide. So what you should do here, you should understand how they actually react. And then the, the fourth one is very important. We see very activated at the moment, relatedness. Relatedness means connected to other people. We are human beings in a tribe. We don't want to live alone in the desert. We don't want to live alone in the forest. We are connected. We want to see people. We want to speak to people. And relatedness sometimes creates difficulty in selling because if somebody has to go back and tell other people that they make a bad decision, they might feel they're losing relatedness to colleagues or to the boss or to the people in the company. So we have to help them to, to feel related, related to the salesman, not by a friend, but related because he understands me. And then one of the things we really need to understand as well is fairness. Fairness is the strongest driver we have, the, stronger, the strongest driver. We don't want to be treated unfair. And here, very interesting is, try to, I, I had this experience. I came in a long time ago, I bought a house in Denmark. Uh, and in a part of this house, I could go and buy a kitchen or get the kitchen in a, a kitchen shop. I went in there. The minute I came in, they started saying to me, welcome so much. Thank you. And then they said, remember, you get you get 20 percent discount. In my head, my biggest point was if I see somebody who has got 25, I lost. It's unfair. I use my status. I don't like this. So you see, he wanted to show me a gift, but he actually made it much more difficult. I never bought anything. I even, I even bought somewhere else but more expensive, but I didn't like that he started saying, in, 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 in a city like this in Dubai, I, I have the entertainer, I have my foodie card, I have everything, but every time I pay, I'm a little afraid I did pay too much. This is because of fairness. It's a very strong motivation. So what we see here is we need really to understand we should activate the pain, that's a threat. But we should very easily help them to see how we can claim to help them to get them here to see the game. This is the pain, here we have the game. And then we do it by talking to the brain, to the brain, and that means, I'll just show you my last slide here. And this is where it gets really interesting because we can train this. We speak to the brain by doing this. After diagnosing pain, we differentiate our claim so it's activated directly to the client. We demonstrate the gain and we deliver to the primal brain. The primal brain is the limbic system, system number one, the emotional part. And we do that by seven drivers. We speak to you. We don't speak to somebody else. 
People around us normally do. No, I speak with you directly. I'm credible. That means I'm trustworthy. Trust is some of the biggest problems. We just discussed it here. And that means I need to make it credible and understandable. I show the contrast between good or bad. If there's no contrast, I don't trigger emotions. And I need to trigger emotions, even sometimes by what is called confronting questions. I have to ask you this question. If you don't learn to be stronger in communicating to the brain, what would be the consequence of your business tomorrow? And if you don't activate that consequence, how can you then go for the pain, sorry, the gain of that? So what I do here, I create variation of storytelling, creation, a variation of how I speak to clients when they speak, and questions I do, because if I have no variation, what will happen? People get bored and boredom, then they just stop listening. And then I have to make it short. That's why I'll stop here, because as I said, the system number two is only possible to be activated like 10% of our waiting time. And I think what I did now, I really took up a lot of your space. But I also hope that you got some kind of taste, a tip of the tongue taste. You got some hunger for knowing more because I can tell you, when you learn to communicate to the brain by understanding the structure, understanding how to do, what will happen is it's so beneficial for the way you work with sales. And I understood why don't people learn from one or two day sales training? Because it's not enough to get new root and we have to get rid of old habits to build up new strong habits and by this i want to end here saying thank you so much for participating all of you i will soon be presenting a small hopefully a physical master class and then i'll come back to you and i hope thank you so much i see uh shakumar shakumar is telling a great webinar thank you bob uh, and i hope you all enjoyed it thank you so much take care and speak to you soon <laughs> thank you